Okay, C. Lindelof videos. Operations on functions, and this goes to Algebra 2 and Intermediate College Algebra. We have this. We have let f of x equal 1 over x plus 2 and g of x equals x over x minus 1. And we're asked to find f divided by g of x. Another way of writing that that your professor may very well write it is f of x divided by g of x. I like it this way because it looks more like the calculus of it. All I'm going to do is what I'm asked to do. Let this division sign be this one. And it says put f of x on the top, and it clearly says that f of x is equal to this thing right here. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to say f of x, so I have this up here, x plus 2. And then it says put g of x at the bottom, and it says that g of x is this, so put this at the bottom. From here, this actually gets really, really easy if you know this um, theorem of complex fractions. In theorem of complex fractions, I want you to tr actually try this because it works every time. The theorem of complex fractions says that if we have two fractions, the first fraction being AB, and then we're going to divide AB by CD, that all we do is this. We bring the AB over, leave it exactly the way it was, and we take the reciprocal of the denominator. That is, so we flip this thing over. So we're going to multiply, so we're not by C over D, but D over, not, I'm sorry, not C over D, but D over C. And we're just going to multiply straight across the way we do with fractions, and we get AD over BC. So here's the theorem. This is the theorem of complex fractions, and I'm just going to apply that theorem to this problem. So I think that's going to work out really good for us, and you'll be able to answer these really quickly. And when your professor or your teacher says, well, why did you do that? You say, hey, hey, hey hold it, hold it, hold it. I use the theorem of complex fractions, and that should shut them up. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, then call them a bad name. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the, the numerator, which is 1 over x plus 2. I said that I'm going to multiply. If you remember the theorem of complex fractions, I'm going to take the reciprocal of this thing. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 1 over x, right? And then all I'm going to do is multiply. Well, 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1. I don't know how your instructor wants this. The way I think it should be written is, frankly, just x over x plus 2. Why do I think that? Because we need to be able to figure out the domain. And the domain of a rational function, and this is a rational function, is really easy to figure out. Keep in mind this, that given any rational function, given any fraction, that any number over 0 is undefined. So when your teacher asks you for a domain, asks you for the domain, he or she wants to know when is this thing undefined? Well, what numbers could you plug in for x that would make the whole thing equal 0? Well, if you plugged in 0, that would be 0 times this mess, that would be 0. So the domain is x such that x cannot equal 0. Go back for a second and ask yourself, is there any other number that you could plug in that would make x that would make this bottom part, this denominator total 0. And if you look, if x was negative 2, you'd have negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And this negative 2 times 0 would still be 0, so x cannot equal negative 2. Just one quick note before we go. This is not a fraction bar. This is read x such that x. And what I try to do is try to make this really steeper so it looks like a front slash. Because this is not a fraction. This is not x over something. This is x such that x is not equal to 0. x is also not equal to negative 2. All right? I hope this was really helpful. This is actually very doable. It's a pain, but it's very doable. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks. Peace. Oh, subscribe.